Do you ever wonder in various aspects of your life whether you're good enough? Do you constantly need feedback or approval from others? I'm Reverend Dr. Brent Hawks. I'm the Executive Director of Rainbow Faith and Freedom. Welcome. I stumbled across Kevin Costner's tribute at Whitney Houston's funeral, and he talked about how even for someone as talented and as beautiful as Whitney Houston, she was constantly struggling throughout her whole life about whether she was good enough. When I was very, very young, I remember an incident when I was watching a bunch of guys playing basketball and they were making jokes about homosexuals. And at the end, when most of them had gone and there was just one guy left practicing, I said to him, what's a homosexual? And he told me how to spell the word and he told me to look it up in the dictionary. So I went home, I did. And the next day he was practicing by himself again. And he said to me, did you look it up? And I said, yes. And he said, so what do you think? And I said, I think that's me. And I remember him picking me up and setting me on a fence post. So I probably was still quite young. And he said to me, that's evil and that's dirty. Don't you ever tell anyone. So I began to learn what others thought of me, what others thought of homosexuality. And I began to wonder, would I ever be good enough? I always felt like something was missing, that something was wrong. And I was constantly given the message that something was bad and that something was sinful. So I wondered if I would ever be good enough. So in order to deal with that, I had to get good at acting, to pretend that I was something that I wasn't. I had to be good at working harder than everybody else to prove that I was good enough. I had to be good at hiding my loneliness, at hiding my hopes, and at hiding my love. I had to be good at proving myself over and over again. Always during this time, there was a question. Why, God, don't you take this away? Why don't you make me good enough? So I tried to be the best Christian I could be. I went to church. I went to Sunday school. I went to summer camp. I went to youth groups. I immersed myself in Christianity. But I also felt that I was never good enough, even at home. My parents worked very, very hard their whole lives to provide for me, to give me a chance to have the future that I've had. But they never told me that they loved me. They never said, we miss you. Now, years later, I would find out that they would say that to other people, but they never said it directly to me. So again, even at home, I felt like, I wasn't good enough. While I was pastoring at the Metropolitan Community Church of Toronto for 40 years, I constantly felt that my sermons were not good enough, even though I got quite a bit of positive feedback. And I would constantly ask my husband, John, was that okay? Was that okay? Was that okay? And even after the big services, Easter services and Pride Day and Christmas Eve, I would say, was that okay? Because I never felt they were quite good enough. Now, I want to be clear. I do not believe that it was my homosexuality that caused me to have these feelings of not being good enough. I believe that it was the impact of homophobia on me. It stole my teenage crushes, crushes and my high school prom. It stole many of the potential friendships that I might have had because I was always afraid to go deep enough in those friendships that I might be found out. And it stole me from the opportunity to ever tell anyone when I was young that I loved them. It stole my voice when I heard the jokes. I didn't dare speak up against homophobia until, until I decided to set aside the homophobia of the church and the homophobia of society and let God's voice speak above the noise of the homophobia first began for me when I saw an ad in The Advocate, the national LGBT magazine in the United States, was an ad for a church with a cross, and I sat and cried and cried and cried when I saw it, because I knew it was home. And it was Troy Perry, the founder of that denomination, the Reverend Troy Perry, who would say things like, God doesn't make mistakes. You're not garbage. God loves you just as you are. And Troy's voice called me home to Metropolitan Community Churches, a place where I felt that love 
and that sense of family. So for 40 years, I pastored at a church where I preached God's love, certainly felt God's love, but still wondered whether I was good enough. Now, in this phase of my life, I believe that I prepared for this moment, starting and building Rainbow Faith and Freedom, my human rights organization, confronting religious-based homophobia, religious-based transphobia, so that other kids don't have their childhood stolen from them, that they don't have their, so they won't have their dreams stolen from them, or their prom, or love stolen from them because they think they're not good enough. I want to make sure that they hear the message and hear the message from faith communities that they are loved by God and that they are good enough. So next week, we're going to have part two of this series when we talk about what seems to cause this feeling of not being good enough. And what are some of the things you might do if you're in that situation that I was in? So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll pass it on to family and friends. And I hope you'll subscribe uh, to this channel. Thank you.